Uh, B movie, like this, this movie wastes a lot of talented people's lives for like three years. This movie costs like $160 million to make. Anyways, I'm just gonna start it. Yeah, so it starts with the DreamWorks logo and they add a little special thing to the DreamWorks logo, which is this bee going over to the guy and then stinging him so he dies. <laughs> okay, good start to your movie. And Seinfeld, the bee, goes, ha! Uh, this movie takes place in a beehive, and it's some sort of weird, like, modern retrofitted beehive where there's roller coasters going through it. There's Seinfeld. And they have, like, like, technology involved in their flying. And look at the way they collect pollen. Deeply weird. I'm not even close to the weirdest stuff in this movie, but, like, look at the pollen gun, and then he pushes a button and it sucks it out, because... Oh, and another weird thing that happens in this movie. I'm just getting to the subtext out of the way right at the top before I get to the weird shit. But here's the flippant attitude towards death that they have in this movie for children. Guys, that's an opening. See that? He's dead. Dead. Another dead one. Deady. Deadified. Two more dead. Dead from the neck up. Dead from the neck down. But that's life. All right. These dialogues. <laughs> and these are the main characters of this movie that speak English and you're expected to empathize with. They die constantly. Anyways, uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Out where? Out there. Oh, no. I have to. Before I go to work for the rest of my life. Typical, like, kids movie construct. He wants more from this world. It's The Little Mermaid, essentially, with Jerry Seinfeld, which we were all, we were all dying for, right? Anyways. Oh, I put this in here because Jerry Seinfeld is not, yeah, I love him. He's a great comedian. He's not a good voice actor. And just imagine he got pulled out of retirement to do this, and you can tell in his performance that he's not happy to be here. Anyways, here we go. Yeah, he's, he's worth like seven trillion dollars and then he had to spend like three days screaming into a microphone. Like, I don't think Seinfeld was particularly pleased. But here's the point of this movie, okay? Here's where we get to the actual plot. And this is where it gets fucking insane. I don't know about this. This is stealing. A lot of stealing. You've taken our homes, our schools, our hospitals. This is all we have. The bee finds out that people use honey and, uh, and then he goes and, and tracks down where the source of the honey comes from. Apparently bees don't know about this, but here he is at the farms, and here are two evil honey farmers. <laughs> it's pretty much pure profit. <laughs> what is this place? A bee's got a brain the size of a pinhead. They are pinheads. <laughs> Why do they hate bees so much? <laughs> Who hates bees? They make the honey, and we make the money. <laughs> Those fucking evil honey farmers. They're like Halliburton, right? Jesus Christ. Anyways, he, here's what happens. Here's what happens in this movie. Sorry, a tri-county bee, Barry Benson, is saying he intends to sue the human race for stealing our honey, packaging it, and profiting from it illegal. No, really. And they go to court. <laughs> Superior There's the bees. <laughs> I include this clip because just for no reason, Oprah is the judge. No, no, really. No, it's Oprah. The honey industry is now in session. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Okay, this is the evil white man, uh, and believe me, there is racial stuff in this movie <laughs> for no fucking reason. Okay, yes, here's Seinfeld making his impassioned plea, and they draw a lot of parallels to bees, and I'm not gonna get into it, but yes, concentration camps. No, honestly. Anyways, here's Seinfeld. No, I swear to God. Here's Seinfeld. This is all over. You'll see how by taking our honey, you're not only taking away everything we have, but everything we are. You see? You can't treat them like equals. Are you, did you catch that? You can't treat them like equals. There's a racial thing going on in B movie. Watch what else he says. Striping savages, digging's the only thing they know. God almighty, really? Okay. Stay away. Is this what nature intended for us? To be forcibly addicted to these smoke machines and man-made wooden slat work camps? Living out our lives as honey slaves to the white man? Yeah. Well, you see, I included that because I think you guys, I think you guys might have thought I was full of shit about the racial stuff, but I went ahead. They actually say it, and watch the watch the black guy scoot away. Okay. So they find in favor of the bees. Those are the concentration camps. Then we want to get back all the money that was ours to begin with. Every last drop. 
Yeah, for real. Okay, so uh, it turns out bees are important because guess what lesson Barry learns when he causes a near global holocaust? Okay, shuts down the hive, the bees aren't working. Yeah, that's something that people care about. And now look, everything is dying in the world because of what he's done. Okay? The and then he makes maybe a mystery to a little inspiring because speech here. Because it takes a lot of bees, doing a lot of small jobs. But let me tell you something about a small job. If you do it really well, it makes a big difference. More than we realized. To us, to everyone. That's why I want to get bees back to doing what we do best. Working together. That's the bee way. We're not made of jello. We get behind a fellow. Black and yellow. Black and yellow! <laughs> Sorry. Um... <laughs> What is this an allegory for? I mean, seriously, what the fuck is this movie about? And then, so they, here, okay, I include this because the bees all getting together and lifting this plane is the most plausible thing that happens in this entire movie. Now, I'm sorry, but now is the time for me to get into the most disturbing part about this movie, and that is a sexual relationship between a human being and a bee. I am not kidding! Watch. This is when she, the, the lady, played by Renee Zellweger, Oscar winner, uh, finally <laughs> meets the bee, and her boyfriend uh, tries to stomp on the bee. But well, listen to what she says. You know I'm allergic to them. This thing could kill me. Why does his life have any less value than yours? I want a divorce. <laughs> Fuck you. What is a fucking bee? I'm allergic. Anyways. <laughs> Okay, so anyways, they're talking about blah blah blah. She's like some weird... You're saying all life has value. You don't know what he's capable of feeling. He's capable of feeling me. She's giving him fuck me eyes! Did you see that? And he's giving them back. Look at the fuck me eyes. They fall in love here. A bee. Oh, I want you, bee. I want you. It's sad like a gem. And then he's looking at her, lustfully. Oh, I want you. You don't have genitals, but I want you. Thanks for the coffee. This is like an awkward sort of like he wants to ask for another date scene here. If I did, I'd be up the rest of my life. <laughs> but anyway, they have a profound connection with this bee hand. <laughs> Watch him want. You met someone? Was she beeish? Not a wasp. Your parents will kill you. Did you hear that? He says, was she beeish? Bees are Jewish in this movie. Oh, I thought I'd just add that right now. For real. And that guy goes, you're not dating a wasp, are you? Racial subjects? Why? Anyways. Oh, no, 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 no. That didn't happen. You didn't do that. That's a bee law. You wouldn't break a bee law. Her name's right. Vanessa. Okay, here's, here is the bees jack off fantasy about a human being in here. Like, that bee is... You don't actually see him masturbating at any point, but like, I mean, this is a jack-off fantasy. Look at her looking all sexy there. I wanna have sex with you! All set! Okay. Go ahead, I'll catch up. Don't be too long, a girl? <laughs> okay, just in case you didn't catch that, uh, that bee-ish reference, it happens again here, you know how... Okay. This way you can't decide! Bye! I just hope she's beige. Weird. You are doing like it. Okay, in case you didn't believe me that there's maybe some sort of metaphorical relationship between the bee, here's where you. Okay, just listen to him. <laughs> Anger, jealousy, lust. He feels lust <laughs> towards that woman. And here's where the love triangle comes into play. Patrick Warbutin is the uh, is the third wheel in this love triangle. And here he is clinking his glass together with a human woman. Okay. Well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was lucky. You think I don't see what you're doing? Somehow this guy has a problem with this. <laughs> His girlfriend is dating an insect. <laughs> cheating on him with an insect. Here he gets emasculated more, right here. Let Barry borrow your razor for his fuzz. Let Barry borrow your razor. That's weird. We need to talk. He's just a little bee. And he happens to be the nicest bee I've met in a long time. <laughs> what are you? I just wanted to pause that for while you guys laugh, but listen to what he says. Oh, 
talking about? What exactly? Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, the fucking bad guy is entirely reasonable in this movie. Like, seriously. And here's, in case you weren't sure that it was implicit enough, like you think I'm still being too, like, literal. Your uh, relationship to that wall. <gasps> We're friends. Good friends? Yes. How good do you live together? Wait a, wait a minute, this isn't are about... You a little... <clears throat> Bed bugs. By some sort of bastardization of all that God created, are you capable of having intercourse with this human woman who is a million times greater in mass than you are and has genitals which you do not? Anyways, by the end of the movie, they never say that, <laughs> that, it, that it's like an aberration before God. In fact, it seems to be implied that they get married. There they are, they had their own law firm together. He's got, and now he's. He's it's helping a cow. <laughs> it's the circle of life. Sometimes I just feel like a piece of meat. And listen to what this guy says. Oh, that bee is living my life. Let it go, honey. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I want you to hear the last line in the movie. Oh, I'm sorry. He says, will this nightmare ever end? And then it says, the end. Because that movie is a fucking nightmare. And what the hell is wrong with people? Anyways, that's, uh, that's B-movie right there, everybody.